Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Miss Latham again, and uh, today we're going to be reading more from My Teacher is an Alien. Um, we're going to be reading chapters 5 and 6 today. Chapter 5 is titled, How Strong is an Alien's Nose? So that chapter title automatically gets my brain moving. Um, I'd love for you to take a minute and come up with a prediction. Uh, remember a prediction is a guess about what you think is going to happen um, in the story. And how strong is an alien's nose? Um, if I were to make a prediction about what's going to happen in this chapter, I might say that I think um, Susan is going to see her alien teacher pick something up and hold it with her nose or with his nose and it might be something heavy um, and maybe aliens have really strong noses. Uh, so why don't you make a prediction right now based off of that chapter title, How Strong is an Alien's Nose? Now remember, it's okay if your prediction is not correct. Um, predictions just help us keep engaged with what we're reading. Um, we're going to read to find out if my prediction is correct or if your prediction is correct. So here we go, chapter five. How strong is an alien's nose? The face on the screen smiled. At least, I think it smiled. It's hard to tell with someone who looks like that. Let's just say that all its teeth were showing. Then it made a long speech in that awful language. I felt like someone was grinding metal next to my ear. I don't know what he said, but it made Broxholm Smith laugh. Well, I suppose it was a laugh. His shoulders shook as if he was laughing. The sound made my stomach turn. When Broxholm stopped laughing, or whatever, he reached down and turned off the screen. The other alien faded away from view. Time for me to get out of there. I slithered backward on my belly along the hall and then down the stairs. When I heard the alien music come on again, I relaxed a little. On the porch, I hesitated for a moment. Should I try to recover my note? A noise in the house made up my mind. Compared to what was behind me, any trouble I might get in because of that note was nothing. I jumped off the porch and ran all the way home, praying that Broxham hadn't seen me. Did you ever have something awful happen to you and not really react to it until later? Like you might almost get hit by a car on your way home from school, but not start shaking until after supper. It was like that with me that afternoon. It wasn't until I got home that what I had really seen began to sink in. I ran up to my room, plowed my way through the mess, and collapsed on my bed. I lay there until supper, staring at the ceiling and shaking with fear. What was I going to do? What would you do if you found out your teacher was an alien? Go to the principal? Tell your parents? Think about it for a minute. Imagine the conversation. Not a pretty thought, is it? The only person who might believe me was weird Peter Thompson. I decided to tell him what I had seen. If I couldn't convince him, I knew I didn't have a chance of convincing anyone. I must have looked pretty bad when I went down for dinner because my mother asked me three times what was bothering me. But then... She tends to be a bit of a fusser. I try never to let her hear me sneeze, because if she does, she decides I've got pneumonia and tries to pack me into bed for a week. Alright, that's a slight exaggeration, but not much. She and my dad are always battling about how much freedom they should give me. Come on, Margaret, my dad will say. She's in sixth grade now. You can't treat her like a baby anymore. Oh, Edward, 
my mother will reply. You seem to think you can treat Susan the same way you would a boy. Can you believe she actually says that? Anyway, that night at supper, she put her hand on my forehead and clucked about how pale I looked. I think she was disappointed that I didn't have a fever. At least then, she would have known what to do. Are you still upset about Miss Schwartz, Susan? She asked, shoveling a load of broccoli onto my plate. Actually, at that moment, I was upset about the broccoli, but Miss Schwartz was a close second. I nodded weakly. Well, I can tell you it wasn't Dr. Bleakman's fault, she said. In fact, he's very upset that Miss Schwartz didn't give him more notice. I talked to Helen. She told me Miss Schwartz didn't even have the courtesy to tell Dr. Bleakman face to face that she was leaving. He got a letter the first day of vacation saying she wouldn't be back. That left him six days to find someone to take her place. I think he did very well to find that handsome Mr. Smith in such a short period of time. Mr. Smith is ruining our class, I said bleakly. Oh, don't be so dramatic, Susan, said Mom. I'm planning to become an actress when I grow up. What should I be? Athletic? Besides, this so-called teacher was going to kidnap some of my classmates and drag them off out to outer space. Suddenly, I realized that I had been putting off the truth. He wasn't going to kidnap some of my classmates. If he was going to pick someone from my class, I might as well be on his list. In fact, after he read that note, I might be his number one prospect. I swallowed hard. I was dying to tell my folks what I had learned, but I knew they wouldn't believe me. That night, I tried to call Peter, but I couldn't get any answer at his house. Come on, Peter, I hissed at the phone. Where are you? I need you. I let it ring 15 times. No answer. I tried again an hour later. No answer. I was as nervous as a marshmallow at a bonfire, but it was even worse when I had to go to school the next morning. I didn't think Broxham knew I had been in his house, but what if I had left behind some sort of clue? Or what if he had some sort of alien super senses that would let him know I had been there? What about that weird, muscular nose? Just how powerful was his sense of smell? Would he know I had been snooping by my odor? I watched his nose carefully when I walked through the classroom door that morning. It didn't twitch or anything, but that didn't mean much. Maybe underneath that mask, his real nose had snicked had snipped me out. Maybe it was sending him a message even now. There she is. That's the one who was in my house yesterday. I sat down. I was so tense, I felt as if I would explode if anyone had touched me. I wanted to pass Peter a note asking him to meet me out on the playground at recess, but I was in enough trouble because of notes already. We stood up and said the Pledge of Allegiance. Then Smith. Smith Broxholm motioned me to his desk. I think you lost something yesterday, he said, and then handed me my note. So my prediction was wrong. Um, she is worried about his nose being so strong as in his sense of smell. She's worried that maybe he was able to smell that she had been in his house. Um, was your prediction correct? You can let me know in the comments. But now I can't wait to read chapter six because uh, Mr. Smith gave Susan the note back. I wonder if he's read it. Chapter six, drafting Peter. I sat at my desk and stared at the note. What was going on here? Was Broxham playing with me? For a moment, the thought that he was actually being a nice guy crossed my mind. I brushed it away. Nice guys don't kidnap sixth graders and drag them into outer space. I decided it was more likely he was just sending me a message. I've got your number, kid. Don't mess with me. I was so wrapped up in trying to figure out what was going on that I could barely concentrate on my work. Most of the time, I just sat and stared at Broxham's face. 
trying to figure out how the, ma how the mask was attached. When I started to wonder if there was any way I could pull it off, my imagination began cooking up a horrifying scene. In this daydream, I saw myself grab Broxholm's ears and begin pulling on them, trying to unmask him. Only the mask wouldn't come off. So I pulled harder. Suddenly, his face began to stretch and twist all out of shape. But the mask still wouldn't come off. It was gross. Stop it, I told my brain firmly. But the vision kept coming back. Sometimes I wonder about my brain. I mean, it seems to have a mind of its own. If it was really my brain, you'd think I would have a little more control over it, wouldn't you? When you get right down to it, brains are pretty weird. But not as weird as having an alien for a teacher. By the middle of the morning, I was beginning to wonder if this whole alien business had been a bad dream. It seemed too impossible to believe, but I knew I hadn't been dreaming. It was real. My teacher was an alien. I couldn't wait to get Peter aside so I could talk to him. When recess came, I tried to act as calm as I wandered over to the wall where Peter usually sat to read. He was sitting on the ground, cross-legged, clutching a book called A Princess of Mars in his skinny hands. I slid down the wall and sat behind him. He acted as if he didn't notice me. Or maybe he really didn't. He was one of those kids who could get so wrapped up in a book it would take a bomb to break his attention. I hated to interrupt him. Peter always seemed a little unhappy to me, like he understood that he just didn't fit in with the rest of us. The only thing I knew that made him happy was reading science fiction. He always had a book hidden behind his school book. The neat thing was, it didn't make any difference, because he was so bright that whenever the teacher asked him a question, he always knew the answer. I could never figure out why they wouldn't just leave him alone and let him read. But that's the way school is, I guess. So what's going on? I said. What a stupid line. I'm glad I'm a girl because when I get older, the guys are going to have to come up with lines when they want to start a conversation. Now there's one job I'm glad I'll never have. Peter lifted his nose out of the book and looked at me as if I were the alien. He blinked and I realized he was trying to come back to the real world. I felt bad for interrupting him. In class, he had to read with one eye on the teacher. Out here, he probably planned on shutting everything out for a while. I hesitated for a minute. How was I going to say this? Finally, I decided to jump right in. I need your help, I said. Peter looked surprised. For what? He asked. I realized I hadn't jumped in after all. The biggie was still to come. Promise you won't laugh at me? I asked. Peter shrugged. Sure, I promise. All right, listen. I know you're not going to believe this, but I found out something awful yesterday. Mr. Smith is an alien. He's come here to kidnap a bunch of kids and take them back to outer space. I held my breath to see what Peter would say. I thought he might laugh or tell me to get lost or, and this thought really scared me, shout it out to everyone else. To my astonishment, he didn't do any of those things. He just looked as if he was going to cry. What's the matter? I asked. You should know, he said. He sniffed and wiped the back of his hands across his nose. What's going on here? I had a sudden thought that maybe he was an alien too. That was stupid, of course. But I had aliens on the brain and I couldn't figure out what else it might be. I don't know, I said. Honest, I don't. He looked at me, and his eyes were so sad they made me want to cry too. I always thought you were the one kid in this class who was on my side, he said. Like that time you tried to stop Duncan when he was beating me up. I expect everyone else to tease me. I just never thought you would do it. 
Now it was my turn to be mad. I'm not teasing, I yelled. Then I lowered my voice. I'm not teasing, I hissed. I'm serious. Peter stared at me. Is this some kind of game? He asked. I hesitated. If I told him the truth, he probably wouldn't believe me. If I told him it was a game, he might at least help me think things through. What a fix. The only way I could get him to believe me was to lie to him. Yeah, I said. I thought you were the one guy in this class with enough imagination to play, but now you've ruined it. No, said Peter. No, we can still play. Just pretend you had to tell me it was a game to get me to believe you. Now my head was starting to spin. Peter was using my reason for lying as a reason to pretend that what he believed was a game for real. Or something like that. This was getting too complicated for me. This is going to be one of those weeks, I thought. The only person I can count on for helping stop an alien invasion thinks the whole thing is a game. Well, as my grandmother always says, you make do with what you've got. And Peter was what I had. I decided to stop worrying about who was believing what and just tell him what happened. Well, I said when I was done, what do you think we should do? Peter stared at the sky for a minute. He rubbed his chin as if he was thinking really hard. Then he gave me his answer. We've got no choice, he said. We have to take, or we have to break into Broxham's house to look for evidence. Wow. So, now Susan has told Peter about Mr. Smith being an alien, um, but it seems like Peter still doesn't think it's real. He thinks it's all a game. Who would you tell? Who would you trust with that knowledge, that information, um, that your teacher was an alien? I don't know if I would tell my parents. I don't know if I would tell my principal. Who would you tell? When we come back, we're going to read chapter 7 and chapter 8 of My Teacher is an Alien.